In this video, I'm going to take you through the first part of my network side grade, including setting up Pi-hole. Make sure you stick around, and if you like what you see, hit subscribe below and keep an eye out for more videos. Hi, I'm Will from Will Surridge Tech, and today we're going to have a look at my network and we're going to side grade it. It's not really an upgrade and it's not really a downgrade, so I'm going to call it a side grade. We're going to look at my current network, look at the problems and issues I'm having with it, and then look at how we're going to fix that with my upgrade or side grade. That is going to include moving over to a Sky router and using Pi-hole as a DHCP server. So let's get going. So first of all, what is my current network? Well, like a lot of British houses, I have fibre to the cabinet, which means it's then at copper to my house. And that plugs into the back of my router that the ISP supplies, i.e. Sky in this case. Most people will use that box, that hub, as a modem, a router, a DHC server, and a number of other things. I don't currently do that. Well, I kind of do do that, but not really do that. Plugged into my Sky Hub, I have a Linksys WRT 1900 ACS. This is what I'm using as my main router. So although the Sky Hub is routing everything, it routes it directly to this one place because there's only one thing connected to it. On this Linksys router, I'm running DDWRT firmware. With DDWRT, I can create separate multiple SSIDs, some VLANs, some guest networks, I've got a DHCP server, I've got everything really. And it works amazingly. But what's the catch? Why do I want to upgrade? Well, fundamentally, the Wi-Fi doesn't reach the whole house. And that's a problem. And with Sky, I get a whole house guarantee. So I can order for free a booster, which connects and creates a mesh network with their original hub to basically guarantee Wi-Fi all the way through the house. In an ideal world, I'd just buy another access point and wire that up via ethernet and then we'd have Wi-Fi everywhere just through another access point but I can't run ethernet everywhere or anywhere really so I'd end up probably getting a mesh system which increased the price again and by the time I've got that I might as well go for the free one that I can get with Sky. So if I am going to move over to Sky as my main router then I'm going to need to make sure at least some of the functionality of my Linksys actually remains and that's where Pi-hole comes in. I'm going to be using Pi-hole not only to block ads as it is you know, designed for, but also as a DHCP server and a local DNS server. Before we start, a bit of the technical jargon. DHCP server basically gives your devices a local IP address so they know where they are and they can talk to each other. And a DNS server kind of acts as a dictionary for you. So, if you, so all web servers have an IP address and if you want to go to a web page, then you need to type in that IP address. But nobody's going to remember that this IP address takes you to google.com. You're just going to remember google.com. So you send google.com to a DNS server and that will kind of translate it into the IP address so your browser knows how to get the data for the website. As part of my new network, I'm actually going to keep the Linksys router online and use it solely as a guest network. So before we crack on with the new stuff, what we need to do is change the settings on the Linksys to make sure it doesn't clash with anywhere we want to put the new stuff. So I'm going to change the SSID, I'm going to change the LAN IP address for the router, I'm going to change the DHCP server settings and remove all the DHCP reservations. Once this is done, we can go over to our Sky Hub and do a similar thing. I'm going to change the LAN IP address to what I want it to be when I'm finished which is going to be 192.168.0.1. We can save and reboot that, and then we can start on Pi-hole. I'm going to be running Pi-hole in a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus, uh, using Ethernet, obviously, and I'm going to be running it on Raspi OS, or formerly known as Raspbian. So the first thing we're going to do is going to go to the Raspberry Pi website and download the Raspi OS image. We're then going to put that onto the SD card using software called Etcher. And once that's done, we need to make sure we create a file called SSH. This is going to be just in the main root of the SD card. 
and it wants just be an empty file called SSH with no file extension. That means we can then you know, SSH into it. Once that's done, plug it into Ethernet and power it up. This should have connected the Pi to the Sky router and the Sky network, and you should be able to use an app-like thing or use the Sky router GUI to find out the IP address of this Pi. You're then going to need to SSH into it by using the command SSH Pi at whatever that IP address is, typing in the password Raspberry. And from here, we can navigate to the Pi-hole website and find the one-line install command. We'll copy that, paste that into the SSH window, and it should install everything. Now you can just click enter for all of the things until it's finished. Uh, you may wish to change your Pi's IP address here if you want to, um, but don't worry about it if you don't, you can always change it later on. Just click yes to everything, and once it's done, you'll get a success window. Once it's finished the installation, it should give you a window with an admin password. Keep this safe. We can then verify it's working by going to pi.hole slash admin, and we should get a lovely dashboard. We can log in with the admin password that we've just given, and you will see on your dashboard that zero devices are connected and nothing's happening. And that's because none of the devices know that Pi-hole exists. They just go to the Skyhub, and the Skyhub sends it on its way into the big wide world web. World Wide Web. So to get all our devices to find the Pi Hole, we need to change the DNS servers on our Sky Hub and tell them to go to the Pi Hole instead of wherever they're currently going for. Easy, you say? No, because the Sky Hub doesn't let you change the DNS servers. Luckily, if you turn off the DHCP server on the Sky Hub, then wherever it goes to get its DHCP will also go for its DNS servers. Great! So simple, you just turn off the DHCP server and turn it on on the Pi, and then they'll all go that way and go through the Pi hole. Not that simple, because when you turn off the DHCP server and hit apply, nothing happens. And I tried again and nothing happens, and I tried again and nothing happens. I'm sure there's a reason behind this, but I don't know what it is. It was just rather frustrating. So to work around this slight issue of not being able to turn off the DHCP server, I downloaded the config file as a backup uh, from the interface, which it lets you do, and then you search in there for DHCP, and it sets it from true to false, and that should turn off the DHCP server. Then we re-upload that, restoring from this backup, and that, lo and behold, the DHCP server was off. Obviously, to connect to the network after that you've turned the DHCP server off, you need to set it all up manually in your laptop or whatever device you're using to connect. Otherwise, it won't you know, know where to go and it won't have an IP address. Now we can jump over to Pi-hole and turn on the DHCP server. I like to set my range from .200 to .250. That means that I've got a nice space at the beginning for all my commonly used items to have static addresses and I've got a little gap at the end that I know I can use if I need to set a manual IP address temporarily, for example. Of course, nothing is using this DHCP server because they've still got leases from the old server on the Skyhub. So I'm going to go on my Mac and re-enable DHCP server and it should get a new lease from the Pi Hole. And success! We can see that the lease has come from the Pi Hole and we can see it's given it the correct static reservation. Now, a quick test of the ad blocker. We'll go to the most famous websites for adverts, which is obviously speedtest.net, and we can see that there are no adverts. To prove it works, we'll jump back into Pi-hole, disable the ad blocker, and go back to speedtest.net, and all the adverts reappear. That's success. Keep an eye out for part two, where I'll go through the customization of Pi-hole and my new network, including looking at the DHCP server, local DNS, and the ad blocker, both whitelisting and blocklisting. So there we have it. My network is side graded, mostly. Make sure you hit subscribe below and hit that bell icon to find out more about my smart tech and how you can build yourself the ultimate smart home.